Bagels and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> yes, this is the uh, the Revel um, Red Baron and his Fumpf Decker Fokker, um, which is, I think judging from some of the blurb on the box and from the, the box art, is uh, supposed to be the uh, the Red Baron from, from Peanuts, from the, the, the Charlie Brown strips. Um, I'm sure some of you will have noted that uh, Snoopy, when he when he goes off flying off into battle on the top of his kennel, um, inevitably meets the Red Baron, uh, and I think that's what this is supposed to be. So there's some blurb on the side of the box. It says um, Baron von Rote, the Red Baron, as he was known across the Channel, stood at attention. His commander, Air Marshal von Blitzkrieg, was here to award him the highest order of the Iron Cross, the Crossed Dog Bones. The Baron had shown great bravery and mastery of the skies in his dogfight with the enemy ace codenamed K-9. But in the back of the Baron's mind, he knew, having seen his arch enemy parachute to safety, he would have to face him again one day. So, there you go. Um, <laughs> but yes, this is what we're going to build today. So, let's get on with it. So just before I start, um, I wanted to make an observation about this kit, and it's something that the... the uh, the keen-eyed among you may well have already noticed. Um, this kit is wrapped in plastic, cellophane. And uh, that is because this kit came to me from the United States. And there's a, a bit of a story, so um, as there inevitably is with these things, uh, which I think is worth the telling. Um, there's a model group that I'm in on Facebook, uh, and the one of the admins of that group is a, a very dear friend of mine. And she recently uh, arranged a charity auction in the group um, in aid of a very worthwhile cause. And the way the auction worked was people donated kits. Uh, they sent them to her. She put them together in uh, bundles. And then you could basically bid, buy a raffle ticket, if you like, um, for specific bundle of these, these groups, or more than one if you wanted to. And uh, people were very generous, I must say. And there was a guy who won one of the bundles. He actually won a couple of the bundles. And one of the bundles, which included this kit, when she went to send it to him, he was like, don't worry about it. Um, give it. Give it to your friend in England. Which was remarkably generous of him. So thank you for that. Uh, and that's how I came to have this and some other kits that you will see as, as time goes on. Um, so that's why I've got this kit from America. But I mentioned the fact that it's wrapped in cellophane. And this kit, uh, my friend when she came to visit me, she brought it over. Along with some of the others. And it was actually her that noticed. I, it never occurred to me that all the kits in America are wrapped in plastic. And yet... The kits over here aren't. Um, sometimes the boxes have a bit of tape on them, but they're generally you can actually just open the boxes, which is just a little aside. I just thought that was quite interesting. Um, but speaking of which, let's get this one open and see what we've got in it. So let me just get this cellophane off. Talk about yourselves for a minute. Oh. Oh. I'm really glad that our kits don't have uh, cellophane on them. More plastic. You know how I feel about plastic. Anyway, um, right, let's open the box. Oh, hang on, I think we're getting there. There we go. Oh, finally. That was really difficult getting that lid off. Um, right, let's have a look. Let's take these out and see what we've got. Um, so, wow, this is... It's quite big. Stop laughing at the back. Um, yeah, it's quite a size. I mean, hang on. It says on the box it's 6.187 inches long. So I suppose that would be roughly, what, about 148 scale? So it's quite a beast. Um, okay, so that's that. There's a lot of chrome on this kit um, for the engine and whatnot. Uh, which I, I'm trying to think of the best way to deal with this. 
Um, I'll probably strip that chrome off. Right, what have we got here? Uh, very simple, very simple decals. Uh, okay. And the instructions. Achtung, there is no time for standing around on ceremonies. The Ace K9 was spotted coming, coming <laughs> over das Englische Channel again. Luftwaffe pilots, we must rise again. Come flug mit me in mein Fünfdecker Fokker. We will chase that dog off. That dog of a pilot back from where he came from. Mit his tail between his legs. Well, that's, um, yeah. <laughs> Good grief, really? Okay. Um, oh, I quite like these plans. They're um, they're actually uh, quite simple, almost like cartoon-like in the way they've been done. I like that. Okay. Right. Uh, so... Seems relatively well moulded. I'm not seeing a lot of flat, but then to be fair, it's dated 2016, so it shouldn't be too bad. There is one thing that really bugs me about this just before I start actually building it, and it's <laughs> from an engineering standpoint, is this. Uh, <laughs> it has a radial engine, and then it has a blown V8, so it's got two engines. <laughs> Which is just, which you know, that's fine. You can you can make two engines work. I'm not sure if you could make a V configured engine work in conjunction with a radial engine. I don't know, but this engine is facing the wrong way. That's the thing that that kind of bugs me about it. It's, I know why they've done it. It's to look cool and and slightly absurd, but. Yeah, that that does bug me slightly. But anyway, that's that's not the point. It's a bit of fun. Let's go. I'm going to build it. So uh, yes, let's let's build the thing. So to start with, I'm going to look at uh, these chrome parts, and there's a reason for that. Uh, these are actually chromed relatively well, but uh, there's always a problem with chrome parts, and I'll show you. And I'll, I'll, the easiest way for me to demonstrate is to remove one of the parts from the frame. So let's start with um, his helmet. So if I just snip that off, like so. And you know what I'm going to say. Straight away, we have a problem that we now have bits that don't have any chrome on them which means that in order to deal with this pie, in order to clean it and everything else, we need to remove the chrome. There's also some burrs around the edge of the helmet here. So if I go to remove those by just scraping them off with a knife, of course, the first thing that happens is I'm scraping the chrome off. Now, this is something that I've covered before. So the best thing really for, for this kind of stuff is to just get rid of the chrome altogether and start again. So to do that, I have here bleach. <laughs> and this is just normal um, household bleach. And all you do is you take your chrome parts and you just pop them into the bleach. Now I think I'm gonna have to cut this frame down a bit to make it fit, but you basically just drop your, drop the parts into the, into, um, into the bleach and uh, just let them let them soak and what will happen is the bleach will actually remove the chrome and it does depend largely on how much uh, chrome is on them and stuff like that but it will go sometimes it goes really quick sometimes it will take a couple of hours but just drop the parts into some bleach and um, the chrome will just come off so we'll leave these in, leave these parts. I'll cut the rest of the parts off the frame and put those in as well. And we'll leave those in there. And um, then we can come back, clean them up and paint them. Uh, while that um, 
the bleach is doing its job, I'm going to start working on some of these sub assemblies. So I'm going to start working on the the second engine. Um, and this is kind of interesting because in the plan here, it actually states specifically that the V8 is a Hemi, <laughs> which I found quite interesting because uh, you would think that it would be, um, you know, like a Mercedes or something, um, Hispano Suiza maybe even, but yeah, it's uh, apparently it's a Hemi. So there you go, who knew? Um, which is going to give us a bit of a dilemma when it comes to painting it. You do actually have the choice to have just the rotary um, or to have the Hemi as well. But I think, you know, you've, you've got the, the Hemi, haven't you? So we'll put that in. Um, so I've just got a couple of bits there. So... I must say, actually, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by this because the um, the the parts are actually stamped, some of them with the mould dates, and apparently uh, it's 1971, so it's a very old mould. But I have to say, it's uh, it's in pretty good nick for for such an old kit. The box is dated 2016, but the model is dated. Um, as I say, the model is dated uh, 1971. So, so like I said, I'm just going to put some of these sub-assemblies together. And then um, we can look at how we're going to proceed from there. So I'm also going to assemble the uh, the fuselage and part of the tail. <laughs> it's a very odd shape this fuselage, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. Because I'm kind of, while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about how I'm going to paint this thing. And uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of in in two minds whether to just do it like the box art or whether to um actually try and make it look a little more i know it sounds weird to say it but historically accurate um but i think once i once i get started i'll know what i'm going to do with it uh i'll put these together and then i'll put those wings on it's certainly a chunky beast i'll give it that I think uh, thick boy is the uh, the, the parlance that would be used today. But yeah, I quite like it. <laughs> it's moderately absurd, but uh, I think I'm going to let that dry and clean up those mould lines before I try and put this tail on, because I think that's going to stop that going on. For, oh, I don't know. No, I'll um, I'll clean it out first. Uh, all right, I think we can put the wheels together as well, and his head. And what we have to remember when putting the wheels together is to put these hubs inside so that they can uh, attach. But these don't need to be glued in. These just. Uh, Go in so they can kind of freewheel. Now, obviously, this one has a like a comedy bandage thing tied around it, so we need to make sure that lines up. Yeah, I have to say, I'm quite pleasantly surprised with how well this is going together. For the 
most part. Alright. I'll leave these parts to dry and then we can move on. Right, so oh blimey, this has been fun. Um some time has passed, <laughs> a couple of days in fact, since the last uh, bit of filming. Um, and as you can see, I've, I've stripped the chrome off, most of the chrome off of that thing. It took, I had to leave it in there for over a day to actually strip the chrome. And this white plastic, I don't know what it is, but it is weird stuff. And it's an absolute nightmare because it does not want to stick together. Um, obviously, I had to assemble the engine, um, the exhaust pipes, and all this kind of stuff. And... It's been an absolute nightmare. The, it, it just won't stick. Uh, normally I use this. This actually isn't uh, a Tami or extra thin cement. This is um, a solvent, a uh, methyl ethyl ketone, MEC. Um, and that works perfectly most of the time. Uh, this, it just won't stick. I tried this Revel contactor and that wouldn't stick it either. And in the end I had to use a combination of the two to actually get these parts to stick together. It's just been awful. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, so that's that done. I've also done a little bit of filling. I've still got to do a little bit of sanding on it. I'm just hoping that the, that the, uh, that the paint is actually going to stick to these things. Um, I don't know. Well, it's just a nightmare. Anyway, that, <laughs> I'll deal with that. Um, I've put a few pieces together. I put the fuselage together. Uh, what I've also done here, I don't know if you can really see it very well, is I have... Where this um, surround is on the cockpit, which a lot of, of First World War aircraft had, they had like a leather pad uh, around the, the cockpit. And this has that moulded in, but not very well. So I've just scribed it um, to make it a little bit clearer. And I've also scribed a line inside to give it some definition. Um, so I've done that as well. And I've done a lot of filling and sanding and more filling and sanding and so on and so forth. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it, uh, or I'm going to try and give it a coat of primer. So for that, I'm going to use uh, this high coat grey primer. You've seen me use this before. It's, it's very good stuff. Um, and it's quite cheap as well. You can get it on Amazon and eBay and places like that. Uh, but I'm going to try and use this and get all of this stuff in primer. And then we can actually get on and do some painting of the thing. <laughs> so I'll go and put some primer on this and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've got everything in either white or grey primer. And the next thing I want to do is paint uh, the engine, the V8. Uh, because according to the instructions, this is a Hemi. And a Hemi, if you are not aware, is traditionally painted orange, hence the term Hemi orange. So I'm actually going to paint that with this uh, X6. Now, the odd thing is, uh, Tamiya don't appear to do a flat orange, only a gloss one. So uh, we'll just have to use this. So, um, yeah, that's the next thing. And the next step is to go over all of the various red bits with uh, this XF7 flat red. So that's next. Right, now there's something happened here that is kind of annoying, but at the same time, it's also quite useful because it's a good instructional moment. I don't know if you can see that very well, if the camera's really picking it up, but you can see this red isn't really very red. Uh, it's I've had this happen before on occasion with this uh, Tamiya flat red. It interacts with the white primer, and instead of going red, it goes, you can see it's gone kind of chalky, 
I don't know if you can if the camera's really picking up, but it's it's more of a sort of a chalky, almost like a pink, than red, which is annoying because obviously we want red. But there is a way to fix this, and what I'm going to do to fix it is I'm going to give it a coat of this uh, gloss varnish, just a, a quick coat over the top, and then once that's dry, I'll give it another coat of red. And what this does is it kind of seals all the layers underneath and uh, makes the red red <laughs> instead of pink so let me put a coat of this on and then I'll show you what I'm talking about right and uh, again hopefully that will show up on the on the camera but uh, you can see that's now uh, red <laughs> and not pink um, so the next thing I'm going to do is some mottling um, you've seen me do mottling before but we'll go through it again uh, using our old friend XF55 deck tan so basically what we want to do is uh, just break up the color a little bit so we've obviously got our red base coat I'm going to put some deck tan over the top of it and then we'll go back over it with the red I'll show you what I'm going to do like that you see Oh, and if in case you were wondering, you can see I've left the lettering on there. The main reason I've done that is because of the fact it's dated 1971, and I quite like that. <laughs> um, anyway, so as you can see, I've just done some, some lines down the middle, and I'll do the same on, the, on this side as well. Like that. And I'll do the same on all of the wings and everything. Uh, for the fuselage I'll do something slightly different, I'll show you that. We're just going to go over it like this and just apply random dots and blotches. And again the whole point of this is to break up the base coat so that it's not so monochromatic, just provide some tonal variation and just make it a little bit more interesting to look at. Just random dots, swirls, squiggles over the whole thing. Like that, you see? I'll get on and do the rest of this and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. So, there's our mottling done. There's one of the wings as well, just so you can see what it looks like. And what I'm going to do now is just go over the whole thing again, very lightly, with the red, uh, just to blend it all together. Like that, you see? And you can see, hopefully, that um, what it's done is it's just provided a little bit of, of tonal variation on the red, so it's not quite so, you know, red. Um, I'll get on and do the rest of it, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Right, and uh, again, I don't know whether that will show up on the camera, but hopefully you can see it's uh, just left some of the... A little bit of the of the deck tan showing through, so it's just not quite so monochromatic. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is move on to these various bits that need to be metallic. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to give all of these parts uh, a base coat with this um, All Clad 2 gloss black base. So that's next. Right, now for some lacquers. Uh, I'm going to use these all clad uh, lacquers. These are, I do like these, they give a very, very good finish. 
Um, so I'm going to use a mix of chrome for some parts and airframe aluminium for other parts. Uh, so I will get on and do that. Right, this is the engine. I'm doing this with uh, the airframe aluminium. I don't want it too shiny. And while I'm doing this, I'd just like to take a moment and thank my top tier patrons, uh, Amy, Edwin, Howard, for their continued support. It is, as ever, much appreciated. Thank you. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Now, I'm going to paint the wheels as well, um, and I'm going to use a technique I've, I've shown you before, but it's always worth going over again. Uh, as you can see, I've painted the wheel black. Um, just with uh, just rubber black and what I'm going to do now is use this uh, this is a circle template and if you don't have a circle template I would thoroughly recommend you get one but basically what you do is just put your wheel in the appropriate sized hole stop laughing at the back and uh, then spray it and you don't have to mask anything or anything like that so I'll show you There you go, you see? <laughs> Easy. Right. Now I'll switch to the chrome and I'll do the other bits. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> I do like this stuff. Right, while I'm waiting for everything to dry, I'm going to paint the wood. Uh, so I'm going to use this um, wood brown. It's a Revel Aqua Colour. They're actually pretty good for brush painting, so we'll use that. Probably need a couple of coats, but that's all right. Right, I'll give these a couple of coats and we'll see what they look like. And I'm also going to use this um, leather brown to uh, do the surround for the cockpit, which also includes obviously a bit on the wing here. So we'll do that too. The only trouble with doing this with a brush is you often have to give it a couple of coats, which is awkward to say the least but we'll do what we can all right this is probably going to take a while but you can see what i'm going to do so uh, i'll give this a few coats and then we'll come back and see what it all looks like all right there we go it doesn't look too bad does it and what I'll do, um, I'll just give this a few minutes to dry properly, and then um, I'll go over the inside of it with this um, Citadel base. Is it Abaddon or Abaddon black? Whichever, one of the two. Um, but I'll use that to do the inside. Right, I've kind of reached that point now in a model where I've got a million little tiny fiddly bits to do and I can't decide what to do next. <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard the same thing. So um, I'm going to put the decals on because there's not very many of them. So uh, I'll cut these out. I've got my little uh, heater here, my, my air wick wax burner to keep my water warm. And I've got my Mr. Mark setter and softer. So I'm going to cut these out and uh, and put them on. So I think we'll start with these big ones that go on the wings. Right, let's see if we can get this on. So let's put it in the water for a second. All right, let's see if we can get this into place. The problem with these large decals is they're um, they're actually a lot more fiddly than small ones. Right. 
uh, which I think that needs to go on that side. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I put it on the wrong side. It's a good start, isn't it? Uh. Right, we'll try that again. Right, let's get that roughly where it wants to be. And slide that out. Uh, okay, now let's see if we can get it to actually sit flat. Oh, this is going to be fun trying to get this to lay flat and the size of the thing. Right, I'll keep working at this, get it to lay flat, and then um, we'll see what it looks like. I think it's going to work, it's just going to take a while. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. <laughs> yeah, see this is a problem I was kind of slightly worried about, is um, this side, it doesn't really fit very well. You can see it doesn't really match the contour of the wing very well at the bottom there. What I should have done really was um, marked it out and, uh, and sprayed this part of the wing white, but yeah, it's too late now. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But we shall keep at it. and I don't think it'll look too bad when it's on. Worst case scenario, I can always mask it off and just touch up the paint. But I'd rather not if I can avoid it. It's kind of funny, actually, on, this, uh, on the box for this. It says the build time is five hours. So, yeah, maybe. Not if you try and do it properly. But anyway. Right, I shall keep on with this and we'll see what happens. Right, that's the decals on. There's only a few, so that was easy enough. Um, still kind of struggling trying to get these ones to lay flat. They don't, it's the trouble with, with large decals like this is they tend to want to wrinkle. And um, I just can't get these to lay. That's about as good as it's going to get, I think. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to seal these with some gloss varnish and then uh, like leave it at that, basically. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Right, I think it's time for a bit of assembly. Um, I've done a little bit already. I did some off camera because the um, the undercarriage I wanted to make sure it was on and dry and everything before I tried to do anything else because uh, I didn't want it you know collapsing while I was trying to put everything else on um, so what I'm going to do now is put the wings on I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this I'm just wondering where to put the engine on first actually I think it might might make more sense to put the engine on first because um, what I've done is I've stuck the uh, exhaust manifolds on um, basically because again they're made of that horrible white plastic and I was deeply concerned that they would actually stay in place um, but uh, we shall see All right, I'm going to use some of this Revel contactor for this great deal. Now the big question is, am, am I going to be able to get this together without the uh, exhaust manifolds coming off? Oh. Right. right, that's the engine on, that went on quite nicely and the exhaust manifolds have stayed in place, which is helpful. And I think what I want to try and do now is actually put these exhausts on. Um, because they need to go like that. I don't even think they're going to need any glue, to be honest. <laughs> they're quite, quite firmly in place, just like that. Um, Right, let's put this one on, see how it goes. 
Oh. It's, it's such an awkward thing to handle. Right. They will fit, so let's glue those on. because these exhausts are touching the floor, touching the ground. <laughs> I was thinking that can't be right, and then of course I realised that the wheels aren't on yet. <sighs> yeah, see this is the trouble, is these exhaust manifolds are not perfectly positioned, but I think they'll be all right. Right, so the next thing I want to do put these wings on uh, let's just dry fit those and make sure they go which they do What I don't want to do is knock this tail fin off. I'm just waiting for that to happen. Now, I want to put these struts in, which went through those wings perfectly earlier and now they're not going to. There we go. Let's have a little play with that. Oh. <laughs> this is fiddlier than I thought it was going to be, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, I've done that wrong. Oh, I've done it wrong. Quick, take those out. Idiot. <laughs> of course, I just realised... I'm sure you watching at home were saying, you're an idiot. Yes, I am an idiot, because what I should have done is put this wing on first. Because it needs to go through all three wings. Oh. Oh well, live and learn. All right, that needs to go on there like that first. Right, now we can put the struts in. Oh, why didn't anybody tell me? Uh, right, let's do this one first. Uh, that way round. That goes through there. Through there. This is where it's going to get tricky. Because it's going to do that. Oh. Oh. Build a plane, they said. It'll be fun, they said. There we go. That's better. Right, let's just make sure that is in the right place. Let's see if we can get the other one in. Oh, dear. <laughs> just talk about yourselves for a minute. <laughs> Nice. 
Oh. Right. That's more like it. Just need to make sure that's in properly. Which is oh. Like that. Now we can glue it in. Oh. Right, and let's check the other side. And that's okay. So we can glue that in. Like that. Oh. Right. Uh, oh, what's happened here? Why isn't that in there where it should be? Get in there. Exhaust manifold moved. That's it. There we go. Right, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that to dry. I might actually put the wheels on quickly just to uh, help it stand up so that it's not resting on those exhaust pipes. that to set up and then uh, put the rest of it together right I've got the engine on now uh, this is a really awkward thing to get on the camera to be honest uh, so the last thing I want to do before we start on the pilot is uh, get the wing the top wing on and I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to turn this upside down and do it like this. So, pop those in like that. And then put something under the tail to hold it up. Right. Okay, I'll get this pinned in place and then we'll uh, start on the pilot. So now we've got the aircraft finished, I'm going to start painting the, uh, the Baron himself. Um, so I've just given him a coat of white primer and I'm going to start with a layer of this uh, Cadian flesh tone. One of the things you may notice I'm doing this is um, I've done something I've done before and uh, around some of these transitions I've actually gone in with a knife and just scored the transition slightly to make them a little bit more um, pronounced. Otherwise you end up with a lot of like very fuzzy, ill-defined transitions and it makes it difficult to, uh, to paint. So by just using the tip of the knife and scoring the... Uh, scoring those transitions it makes them a bit easier to see mainly like around the collar and and things like that I'll just give the whole of his head um, a going over with this Cadian flesh tone and then we'll go on from there. Right, so there he is with his first coat on and what I'm going to do now is do a little bit of highlighting with this uh, Kislev flesh. 
So I'll just thin this out and use it to highlight various bits. Right, so I'm gonna do nose, cheekbones. Don't need to do too much because his helmet actually covers an awful lot of his head. do actually all right there we go and now I'm just going to do his eye with this uh, bugman's glow and I'll show you what I'm going to do it's just very simple Just like that, you see, <laughs> that's all I'm doing for the eye. <laughs> and for his uniform, I'm going to use this Panzer Aces uh, field grey, which is kind of a green, but you know, it's a green grey. Oh, my daughter's here. Say hello, Katie. Hello, Katie. He's the comedian. What are you up to? Watching you. I should make you do this, you've got better eyes than me. Have I there? Well, do you need to wear glasses? No. No, well there you go. Oh, now the missus is here as well. Say hello, missus. Hello, missus. Cut that bit out. What? You need to cut that bit out. No. Hmm. Right, anyway, this is going to take a few coats, so I'll get this done and then um, show you what it looks like. Right, that's his uniform done. Now I'm going to do his moustache and his eyebrows with this. Um, Abaddon, Abaddon, Black, whichever one it is. Anyway, that's next.
All right, I'll just fill in the rest of that and then we'll give it a little bit of a dry brush. All right, so I've just given his uh, moustache and eyebrows and whatnot a little dry brushing uh, with some Corex white. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do his epaulette and uh, the chain for his monocle. And I'm going to use this uh, burnished gold. This is probably going to take a few coats of this because it really doesn't cover very well. I think what I should have done really was probably done a coat of yellow on it first and then put the gold over the top. Alright, that will need another couple of coats, but uh, I think you get the idea. And what I'm also going to do is do the chain on his uh, monocle too. I'll give those a few coats and then uh, we'll come back and see what it looks like. Alright, and now fun bit, trying to attach this monocle. that to dry for a while, touch up the paint on it, and then give him a coat of varnish, I think. Let's just leave that like that. Uh, the other thing I did as well, which I did off camera, is um, I painted his helmet, uh, his pickle halb. Um, on the box it's chrome, and there were actually like chrome or nickel plated pickle halves, but I must admit I've always rather preferred the, the black ones so that's why I did it black so uh, we'll let that dry touch up the paint on the monocle stick his helmet on stick him in the cockpit and then I think we can uh, wrap this up and here is our finished article um, this actually turned out to be a little bit more problematic than I thought it was going to be especially with the chrome and that weird white plastic but uh, yeah I think it's come out all right I'm, I'm quite pleased with the results um, it's, uh, I'll tell you now, it's a, it's a weird thing to try and take pictures of because it's a, such a funny angle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I quite like this. It's, uh, just a, a bit of fun. Um, an interesting, uuh, take on the, uh, on the Fokker triplane. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Um, and as ever, you're welcome to come and join us in the, the staff canteen on Facebook and, uh, as ever, if you're feeling flush and you fancy uh, helping me out on Patreon, that would be uh, <laughs> much appreciated. So, yeah, uh, I'd like to uh, just give a, a special thank you to the chap who uh, who donated this model. It was very kind of you. Um, and as I said, there are some others that uh, he gave me as well that I'll um, be getting to at some point in the future. And uh, a big thank you to Amy for bringing them over for me. So, yeah. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.